Chi Dankwa, a Bokwa North uh, MPP, uh, PC hopeful, who the people said, no, you're not ready yet. He's spokesperson for governance and security. My good friend, Dr. Asante, at the time, was government spokesperson on infrastructure. The late Ochema Boaji was government spokesperson on finance, and so on and so forth. So many of them, even though the finance ministry has a PRO, even though they are a, a dep minister and about two deputies or maybe more at the finance ministry, and, and at some other ministries, you even have three deputies who could be speaking specifically to the areas that they've been assigned to. So if all these appointments are there, plus presidential staff, uh, staffers, plus uh, party communicators, etc., if you have all these people who are drawing salaries from the sweat of Ghanaians, and it takes only five people to be able to communicate and it makes their communication wobble, then there's a problem. They are not fit for purpose. You need to sack all of them. Or maybe they are not allowing the professionals to do their work. That's why their communication is the way it is. Or maybe the people have already listened to both sides of the conversation. They think that what is being told by official dom is not the case. So, for example, in Ghana, we are complaining bitterly about COVID, Russia, and Ukraine. And we say the war in Russia and Ukraine is what has caused our downfall largely. And then we blame COVID. And when we get tired, we blame, uh, what do you call it, the opposition. But recently in Russia, the banks in Russia are declaring billions of dollars in profit. And the central bank in Russia does not even understand. The people who are fighting, and we are far away from that fight. And we insist that it is their fight that has brought us on our knees. Not mismanagement, not incompetence, not arrogance, not the brazen arrogance or the premium perfidy that is being practiced. But we say it is what is happening in Russia and Ukraine. Russia banks are declaring billions of dollars in profit. So the people who are fighting are making profit. And those of us who are watching the match, we are suffering more than the people who are suffering. So I decided to do a little throwback for you. Because me, when you insult me, you actually ginger me. I like it when you insult me. I don't encourage for people to be insulted. But if you decide that, oh, yours is not to answer the questions that we ask, yours is not to be a gentleman or a lady, but yours to be abusive and attack and to, you know, gain the admiration of whoever sent you to do that, we, we will engage, I, I will get energized. So take me back to 10 years ago. 10 years ago, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado was not president. Ten years ago, Dr. Baumia was not vice president. Please show that thing for me. The ten years ago throwback. Ten years ago, there was the new patriotic party was um, was 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 not in power, right? Ten years ago, put the thing up on the screen for me. So there was a DC said the chair in DC, and I said I wrote this on the third of February, 2014. I said so this chair in DC was derailed mid speech by mere rhetoric. He got infuriated, fumed, and walked out of the deba he was uh, uh, addressing. He, I honestly didn't hear him say anything apart from his brag. And the best they could do was to follow and beg him to come and say what? What sort of leaders do we have? What sort of DC is this? Pia indeed. And if you go on to this post, the people who commented on it, Today, they are the ones who say. So at the time when I wrote this, I'm sure the NDC, the MPP had contracted me to be speaking up against the ills in the NDC government. You see the hypocrisy? This was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was host of the morning show on TV Africa called Daybreak. 10 years ago, I was the host of the rundown show on TV Africa. 10 years ago, I was on Plaza FM. 10 years ago. This one, the MPP people who now say he is NDC, they contracted me to do this. Show me the other one. There's a nine-year anniversary one that I also want to show. Same February, nine years ago. Now, February nine years ago, I said, with all this doom, economic hardship, and acute water shortage, coupled with the hot sun that is left unharvested for the generation of solar power, I feel like I live in a dictatorial state governed by dot, 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 dot. Again, check the people who commented on this post. Nine years ago, I wrote this. The MPP is happy to say doom so existed. Economic hardship, acute water shortage, blah, 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 all the things. They say them. I captured them nine years ago. And those views were, were expressed by me on TV as well. Unless you don't know me, but if you have known me, I've been like this since I was a boy. So this one, did the MPP also contract me to speak against the NDC at the time? 
The fact that times have changed doesn't make right wrong and wrong right. Professor Mill said it. And we must not eat our cake and have it. You cannot approbate and reprobate. So you cannot stop me from speaking today. You will not stop me from speaking tomorrow. Intimidation will not win. You cannot insult. I've just showed you evidence. Was I NPP at the time? And why am I suddenly become NDC? Why are you forcing me into political clothing? Fix the country. Now, show me the picture of the Cocoa Board CEO. Yesterday, we started a series on Cocoa Board and how we have been importing cocoa beans according to Cocoa Board by the data and the facts that they have for 20 years or so. And I said that somebody is interested in telling us that we have been killing or running down our cocoa industry over the past 20 years and we're happy about it and we put the last nail in the coffin. Local buying companies do not get their monies on time. So our cocoa is smuggled out of the country. It is a fact. The main crop season will end in March. Where is the cocoa we planted, which we so-called premium? And if we are happy to sell the premium to other countries, the people of Ghana whose land and whose sweat and toil harvested those premium beans. You say they do not deserve to enjoy some of the premium beans. When Cocoa Board was set up in 1947 by ordinance, perfected in 1957 by Osajifo, eh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, were they, were they giving the people of Ghana at the time the beans that was not premium? Today, Cocoa Board literally is on its knees because we borrow to go and, and, and buy cocoa to come and sell, and at the end of the day, we declare losses. Yempen ni akobo busiya debe diya koko ye viya ni aboka. And the man at the helm of affairs at Cocoa Board is the Honorable Joseph Boahin Edu. And I'm sure you're wondering how he became Honorable Joseph Boahin Edu. Honorable Joseph Boahin Edu, fact number one, is as old as Ghana. He was born on December 13, 1957. So he's as old as Ghana, which means that he's a retiree, which means that he's 67. Right? Number two, Honorable Joseph Boyne Edu has been a member of parliament before. And as for member of parliament, there be you know that the S Graciano. Why be Honorable Joseph Boyne Edu has been a regional minister for the Western region before. I be you know that the minister there, S Graciano, why be before. So if since he got in there. The fortunes of Cocoa Board is really not showing. The fortunes of the Cocoa Farmer is really not showing. And then we are now being told by some experts within the, the field who don't want to be uh, you know, out there, they want to remain anonymous, that we are even yet to make out 300,000 metric tons, as opposed to the average of 700,000 metric tons and 800,000 uh, metric tons. Why we, we, do we still have Honorable Joseph Boy and Edward there? But the young men, we have the men, we have the men. The young men in the MPP, they are finished. Let the retirees go and let the young grow. Let the retirees go and let the young grow. Let the retirees go and let the young grow. Let the retirees go and let the young grow. And I'll tell you something. When on the 5th of August 2022, the president agreed in cabinet with his minister that we should be told in parliament that there will be no post-retirement contracts. Come to me. There will be no post-retirement contracts. It was on the 5th of August 2022. I have shown you letters of people being given post-retirement contracts when their contracts at the time had ended. And the caveat was that it was only when they were in, their expertise was in short supply. So far, the people have showed you from chief fire officer to controller of immigration, to uh, the man at ICOR, to uh, National Theater, to uh, Joseph Boy in Edu, to the NIA Professor Atefua, to the Director of Operations at the NIA uh, Kenel Gansa, to many other people. And I'll bring you a list, a comprehensive list towards the end of their their expertise is not it's not in short supply. And the painful thing is that we live in a country where young people are told that the payroll is full. But old people are giving jobs to do. And they are being given contract extensions with all the largest and the fine things that come along. 
I'll play a few, Dr. Baum. We have videos for you. But there's a police vehicle in the mud. Show me that one quickly. I'm not saying that that police vehicle is in the mud because of Galamse. I'm not saying that. I am not saying that that police vehicle is in the mud because of Galamse. I'm just saying that Galamse is still alive and well. And I, this picture has been circulating for some time. The Ghana Police Service has not issued a statement on this one. And you know that IGP Dampari has made sure that all the PROs do not speak to the media. Police communication has now been centralized and paperized. So you have to speak to the paper. They will issue statement. And even that statement has not come. So this car number, GP2694, who owns this car? car? Who was it given to? Why is it in the mud? What is it doing in the mud? Is it an operational vehicle? Who was it assigned to? And how did it end up in the mud? And why really is it in the mud? And why have we not been told why it is in the mud? These are simple questions. So good morning to you, IGP Dampari. Now, let's play my Dr. Baumia videos. One teacher, one laptop. It was an initiative that was launched by Dr. Baumia. Over the week, when I, I, I brought up that subject matter, he said, oh, Dr. Baumia, yes. Uh, he has nothing to do with it. You should ask the teacher unions. It is the teacher unions who came to government with a proposal that they should support them to get laptops for the teachers. So government decided to pay. Look, listen to Dr. Baumia. of the cost of each laptop while the teacher pays the remaining 30 percent the laptop however becomes the personal property of the teacher and serves the benefit of providing a tool for developing the teacher's professional and personal capacity director Jim. so that was dr baumia at the launch and he said you heard him 70 percent by government 30 percent by the teachers the teachers have had their 30% deducted from their salaries. In fact, I'm told that the teachers who were not within the jurisdiction at the time and have just returned have not received their, their, their laptops. There are still some teachers who are in this Republic of Ghana who have not received their laptops, but their monies have been deducted. And they have been calling us on Community Voices on 3FM 92.7. They have been calling, sending messages to our WhatsApp portal. If you go onto my personal Facebook page, you see them complaining. Some have gone to the district offices without fail, and they have not gotten their laptops. Some are even questioning the capacity and the quality of the laptop, the TM1. And some have jokingly called it Thomas Musa 1 laptops. So, yes, the teacher unions have a question to answer. But can you decouple the vice president for Because the vice president said at some point that 80% of the laptops have been delivered and that the program was a success. The man who launched it, the man who announced that the thing is a success, when there's a problem, we cannot ask him. What kind of thinking is that? So, Dr. Baumia, good morning to you. One teacher, one laptop. Those teachers who have had their monies deducted and yet they do not have the laptop. Is there any help for them? Simple question. Two, economic management team. The conversation is how Dr. Baumia was not allowed to function as economic management team. Listen to these sound bites. In place, a very first class um, economic management team. Um, I would even say world class because the, um, the Minister of Finance, the very known Wall Street banker, investment banker, um, really high achiever, the, the, the former Minister of Finance, who is Deputy Chair, Vice Chair of the Economic Management Team, Yao Safo Mafu, he was voted at once time the best finance minister in Africa by the World Economic Forum and, and many others. They're just a solid, capable group of individuals who have come together to manage the team. And we meet every week without fail uh, and, 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 and so we have a laser eyed focus on the economy and we are taking decisions and, and making sure uh, we monitor what is going on I want all of us here
to, and on behalf of my colleagues, say a very big thank you to the type of leadership the EMT has enjoyed from Dr. Baumia. A chairman who is so involved in the work of every, he works like a member, like a secretary, is telling quality, professionally excellent. So we are where we are because Dr. Baumia is putting up a very professional chairmanship to the EMT. And I pray that we continue to work together as a team. I'm glad to be able to report, Mr. Speaker, that the economic management team, under the stellar leadership of the strong, brilliant economist, <laughs> Vice President, <laughs> Vice President Muhammad Mbuhaumia, <laughs> has risen to the challenge, and the hard work is beginning to show positive results. Currencies depreciate when the fundamentals are wrong. Right. And the mismanagement of this economy in terms of the fundamentals is what was driving the, the, the depreciation of the currency. You can't be running double-digit deficits, double-digit current account and fiscal deficits, borrowing to this extent, financing your deficit with huge printing of money from the central bank, right. and expect your currency to be stable. The fundamentals will not support it. Right. They will not so that was a small compilation of Dr. We have more. We have more of those ones. So when the applause was good, Dr. Baumia and those who support him never came to say he was not being allowed to function as the head of the economic management team. When the going was good. When the going is, go, going is bad, they say, oh, he's no longer, he was not allowed to function. He was not, so we are suddenly creating an impression that Dr. Baumia was some you, not useful if you are not useful, then you are, well, was a useless person, advisor around the whole system. What kind, of, what kind of insult are we trying to lay on the vice president? He was a useful and a very integral part of all that happened. And the president said that he, we are where we are because of how he has led the EMT. Mr. Safo Mafo said that we should applaud him because he was working in ev at every corner. He himself said, we have a laser-eyed focus on the economy. If you go on to www.baumia.com, you see, he said, they formulate, the pol if I, they guide the policies, and they see to its implementation as head of the economic management team. Why are we suddenly taking the man's glory from him? So we are happy to say, uh, drone for medical supplies, he did it. We are happy to say, oh, one teacher, one laptop. We are happy to say, oh, Mr. Technology, Mr. Digital, we mentioned all those. But when it comes to the economy, which was the main focus of his job, I mean, how, 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 did, how did we arrive here? Dr. Steve Mantial said that if you are part of a team, and you are not happy with the team, the way the team is going, and you disagree, and professionally it doesn't lie in sync with what you believe and think and know, quit the team. Dr. Baumia didn't quit the team. He is still with the team as we speak until January 6, 2025. So if there are any questions about the economy, we will ask Dr. Baumia and his economic management team. If there are any questions, we will ask him. We will ask him and the present members and the immediate past members of the economic management team. We will ask them questions. It's a basic thing to do. We have told that Dr. Baumia will address us tomorrow. He will be addressing us as flag bearer of the NPP. But we want him to address us as vice president of the republic also. Because he is enjoying the benefits of the office of the vice president of the republic. And we do not want a case where there will be abuse of incumbency where he is using state resources and state platforms to actually run his campaign when he is supposed to be actually working. We do not want to be hearing speeches as to how the thing can be done. We want to see action. Yema menshe, form how the thing ought to be done. Because when somebody else was in power, he held lectures and he was telling us how it had to be done. Today he is in power. How is it supposed to be done? Is he doing it the way it has to be done? If it is not being done that way, what is the problem? 
ask for the videos we will play them insult us all you can tag us all you can it doesn't change anything in the past Get, get ready for an exciting escape, an eight-day all-inclusive.